Well, brothers and sisters at Downsview, I greet you on a Remembrance Day morning. The day of <clears throat> remembrance for those who have given their lives in the service, in particular, of our country. Sometimes they gave their lives ultimately and died, and sometimes they gave their lives in service and were terribly maimed or injured. And sometimes it is simply for those who served and came through it, who among them would suggest that any of them came through it unscathed. The day, of course, as most of you would know, marks the day that the First World War armistice was signed, or a ceasefire was signed, <coughs> in France between the Allied forces, of course, and Germany. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. That's when it was signed, and that's the day that historically folks have chosen to remember that day for remembering those who have served us, served us so well, and served us as we enjoy freedoms, which surely any of us who are honest with ourselves can suggest that, uh, well, we take for granted, don't we? And it's a good thing in God's eyes for Christians to remember where he has blessed us and how he's blessed us. And <clears throat> the Bible, in fact, is full of encouragements for us to remember, to not forget how God has cared for us as his people. I'm outside this morning in particular because I grew up, as many of you have done for years, remembering those who served on our behalf at outdoor or services of remembrance, cenotaphs, it's an odd word maybe that we don't use all the time, it literally means empty tomb. It was a place of monument that was given for <coughs> folks who have, have died in the past and that the tomb was empty in the sense that there was an afterlife to be enjoyed and in some ways almost spoken of as an afterlife that had been won. And so we generally gather outside on days like this, but because of our odd times of, of COVID, we find ourselves doing things virtually and remembering things privately. I had an uncle, my grandfather's grandmother's brother, Uncle Harry. I suppose he's my great uncle. He was a great uncle. Terrific sense of humor. And he was one of those men with a terrific sense of honor. You know at a family gathering sometimes you have folks around and, and they remember, whether it's a, maybe a birthday or a, an anniversary or graduation ceremony or something and there's someone in the room who just says oh that's just great you know well isn't that something well that's really an achievement so stuff like that and there's someone who you think they they just seem to have a sense of grasping how significant the occasion was uncle harry was like that he was a veteran in the canadian air force in the Second World War over Britain. He was a tail gunner in the back of a Lancaster bomber. Lancaster bombers were huge behemoths of aircraft and they had this little glass bubble in the back as many, many aircraft did. And that was a key spot that enemy fighters would try to hit because of course that was one of the few 
acts of defense that these bombers had. And Uncle Harry didn't tell me much about that, but I knew about that. And frankly, Grandma would tell me more about what he would tell her and how difficult he had found it in the ensuing years to remember those things. It's one of the things about Remembrance Day, isn't it, is that we forget to remember difficult things. And sometimes we do that to our own detriment because the very worthwhile lessons that we've learned can fall by the wayside because it's difficult or it's hard. And so we'd rather not think of it at all. And we throw the memory of the, the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, instead of finding ourselves willing to sort of work through the, the pain of hard memories and learn what we can from them. Sometimes those memories are just a very small things, aren't they? One of my brother pastors was reminding me a week or so ago the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10. And, and his application of it was, do not despise the day of small things. In fact, the text says, he who has despised the day of small things will rejoice that there's coming a time that we recognize that the culmination of a thousand small things is going to culminate in ultimate victory and eternal blessing for those who bowed their knee in joyful submission to the Lord of the, the universe, the ultimate warrior who will defeat evil once and, and for all and where death, hell, and the grave have been defeated by his sacrifice on the cross, we will actually experience all that that means for an eternity with the Lord. Until then, we're here, aren't we? And I was just speaking to Colleen McDonald this morning, and it occurred to me the connection between that passage in Zechariah about not despising the day of small things. Colleen said to me, you know, I noticed that she had seen one of our Facebook posts and we started chatting through it and I said I was just having lunch with my son yesterday out at a little park across from Sunnybrook Hospital where he he works and she was just so excited about what a great thing that was for us to be doing and I said you know it's interesting Colleen because I feel like it is a big deal and she said a little thing is a big thing when God is involved a little thing is a big thing when God is involved. And I thought, that's just great. And especially on a Remembrance Day. There are those of you who have served in the armed forces in our country or on behalf of our country in other countries. There are those of you who are enlisted now and willing and ready to do that. I, I know with the kind of ethnicity diversity that we have at Downsview, but there are folks who themselves have and have had family members who served in the armed forces of other countries. And there can be conflicting emotions and even allegiances at times, isn't there? Because you want to be on the side of what's right, and you're a soldier. You do as you're told. Many of our American brothers and sisters would tell us about how conflicted their history is with the War of Independence, that they would usurp legitimate authority of Britain over, at that point, the 13 colonies, which eventually became the United States. Not all of them at once, but they would be conflicted because taxation without representation isn't necessarily an unbiblical way to live, but that became the grounds that moved them to revolt. Those who were conflicted in the civil war, or the war between the states, or the war of the aggression, depending where you live in the states, the conflict of, well, this is what's right, 
but I'm a soldier in the Confederate Army. What, what do I do? It's, it's conflicting that way, and, and it's quite understandable. And frankly, I think it's admirable where people find themselves conflicted that way, because they're thinking, and they're committed, trying to live out that commitment to what's right and honest, and ultimately to the one who's their true leader. You know, the one thing about Remembrance Day, brothers and sisters, is to remember that being on Christ's side, a soldier in his army, if you will, part of his people, you're always on the right side. He always does what's right. He always has chosen what's right. He's always got you on the side of the right thing. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, but God's truth abideth still. His kingdom, His kingdom is forever. The 570 some birthday of Martin Luther, we recite that line from his well known hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. On a day of remembrance, brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Pray that folks will be encouraged in their remembrances today. They will do so with somber reverence. And ultimately, as us is down to you, that we will always see memories of good earthly things pointing us to the author of them all. Enjoy your day today, church. Bye.